I said, oh, I need stuck. somebody to have money. <laughs> Okay, good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the July 10th meeting of the St. Mary's County Planning Commission. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer this evening. Uh, the one sign-up sheet is if, if you are speaking. The other is for uh, the sheet is for attendees of these hearings. Any, in case any further information needs to be sent to you regarding the cases, please sign in on those sheets. Our meeting is being recorded for the public record. Any comments made by anyone present must be recorded as part of the record. Therefore, if you have anything to say, you need to come up to one of the microphones provided. Your comments cannot be recorded and placed in the record unless they are directed to a microphone. You are to direct your statements, questions, or responses to the board only, and will direct them to the appropriate person for an answer. Please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone testifying or asking questions during our public hearings will be required to take the oath. Um, and please turn your um, cell phones off if you could at this time or silence them. Thank you for your cooperation. On our, under our, on our agenda this evening, let's see. What's the sheet here? Is. After a review and um, approval of the January, June 26 minutes, our only public meeting this evening is a concept site plan number CSP21 0201 for the Charlotte Hall self storage Mount Wolf Annex phase one and two. And uh, the owner is JLH Properties. LLC and BKJ Investments LLC. Uh, their action requested this evening is a review of a concept site plan for phase one, a 24,000 square foot building, and phase two, a 10,724 square foot building. Okay, I'll let the board members introduce themselves, starting with Mr. Brown. John Brown. Kim Summers. Howard Thompson. And Joe Van Kirk. <laughs> Joe Fazekas, Merle Evans. Okay, also with us this evening from county staff, uh, our director of Department of Land Use and Growth Management, Jessica Andritz, uh, her planner, Brandy Glenn, also Sean Lee Blasco, her, their planner, and their senior administrative coordinator is Jessica Birch. Also from the county, uh, our assistant county attorney, John Hauser, uh, the director of Public Works and Transportation, Mr. Jim Gotch, from the St. Mary's County Planning Com um, Metropolitan Commission is Anna Wells, and our video media producer this evening is Amy Carter. Okay, did everybody have a chance to review the June 26 minutes? Any corrections? Do I have a motion to accept? I motion to accept the minutes from June 26th. Okay, I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor of that motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Moving right along, our first case of the evening, as I say, will be the Charlotte Hall self-storage Mount Wolf Annex. Uh, at this time, anyone testifying or asking questions or um, this evening, if you stand at this time, I'll get you sworn in. Do you declare and affirm under the penalty of perjury that the testimony, responses, and statements you may give will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Okay, thank you. Brandy. Good evening. Agenda item one is concept site plan CSP 21-0201 for the Charlotte Hall self-storage Mount Wolf Annex. The applicant is seeking approval of a concept site plan consisting of two phases. Phase one is a 24,000 square foot building. Phase two is a 10,724 square foot building. The site is located at 37702 Mount Wolf Road, Charlotte Hall. The land use is mixed use, moderate intensity. Per the comp plan, secondary growth centers are Charlotte Hall. New Market, Mechanicsville, Hollywood, Piney Point, urban and pattern and form des des designed for moderately intense residential, commercial, and industrial development supported by provision of community facilities and services. The zoning is town center mixed use.
The regulations for the Town Center Mixed Use District provide opportunities for residential and commercial development within town centers consistent with the comprehensive plan. Standards are intended to create an urban character and make the core areas safe, pedestrian friendly, and visually attractive. Use type 66, personal storage. Storage of goods and materials within an enclosed building with direct access to individual storage spaces and available to the general public for a fee. This classification does not include warehousing or wholesaling and distribution centers. The public notice for the Planning Commission public hearing was published in Southern Maryland News on June 23rd and June 30th. The property has been posted in accordance with CZO requirements section 21.3.3. Certified mail receipts have been received and have been entered into the record of this public hearing as Exhibit 1. The agenda was posted on the website on June 27th. The concept site plan was reviewed at the TEC meeting held on November 24th, 2021. The use of personal storage is, a permitted, is permitted as a limited use in the Town Center Mixed Use Zoning District. For all non-residential and multifamily residential projects that require major site plan approval, a concept site plan shall first be approved by the Planning Commission before the major site plan may be processed for approval by the planning director. This is a public hearing which enables all who wish to provide information to the Planning Commission. In order to approve the concept site plan, the Planning Commission shall make the findings that the proposed development is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable functional plans, may be served by adequate public facilities as required by section 70.2.2, .2, will promote the health, safety, and welfare of the general public, adequately developed recreational and other community amenities are provided in accordance with the comprehensive plan and the comprehensive zoning ordinance is consistent with chapter 62 design objectives. This concludes the staff report and is entered into the record of this public hearing as exhibit two. Mr. Parlett is here um, representing the project. Are there any questions for me? Does anybody have any questions for staff? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paulette. Could you give us your name and business address for the record? John Parlett, 29971 Business Center Drive, Charlotte Hall. I have reinforcements in the back, should, should we need them? We have two seats for them. If, they, if you need them up here now for support, you call, I'm, you call as needed. I'm good for the moment, thank you. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity tonight to, uh, to present this project. Um, I've prepared a PowerPoint presentation that will kind of walk us through this and hopefully answer any questions that the board may have and address any concerns that the public who may be watching this evening or sitting here with us this evening may have in regards to this, uh, this project. The, um, the project is called the Charlotte Hall Self Storage Mount Wolf Road Annex in as much as I currently have a self storage facility on Golden Beach Road about three quarters of a mile from this location. And it's our plan to manage that project, this new project from our current office, rather than have personnel in both places. Um, the existing Charlotte Hall self storage is 104 units of non-climate controlled direct access uh, facility and as well as our office. We continually stay above 99% occupancy uh, we are constantly turning people away. So we decided that this would be in the best interest of the community that needs a facility to expand. We just don't have any additional land where our current location is. And I had this property behind the tractor supply we developed a couple of years ago that we felt would be a good location for what is really a low intense, uh, intensity use. Uh, the other thing I mentioned here is our facility is non-climate controlled. None of the facilities in the north end of St. Mary's are climate controlled. Someone in the Charlotte Hall Mechanicsville area would have to go to either Leonardtown to the new facility on, on Route 5 or go north to Waldorf to, uh, to have a climate controlled facility. And a lot of folks like that, furniture and the like, 
does better where the temperature is not dramatically swinging during the course of the year. So the new proposed facility for the annex will be 100% climate controlled space. I know that the uh, Planning Commission, rightfully so, is very much concerned about traffic. Um, and I, I can't state it enough how, what a low impact business this is. Given the fact that we have 104 units and everything is electronically controlled for people coming and going, we can, we've looked at months on end of trips into our facility and out of our facility. Um, based on our current facility's usage, which we expect this new facility to be similar, just more units, uh, we anticipate there will be on an average day 17 visits to the facility, which would equate to 14 trips on the roads a day, seven coming and seven going. We're open for 16 hours during the day, and these events happen all during opening hours. There's no rush hour, as it were, in the self-storage business. So it equates to something less than one trip per hour that's being generated by this facility. Um, on our busiest day, because we keep we monitor that as well, in the course of a month, we would expect the busiest day to have 23 visits, 46 trips per day, which is still only three trips per hour during the course of the day. And again, they're spread out um, during the entire day. Um, Mr. Van Kirk, I know you in particular have been very concerned about the traffic circle at uh, Triangle Drive and Mount Wolf Road. And I'm happy to tell you that it is under construction. As of last Wednesday, they started stakeout. Today, they were clearing some of the trees and growth in this and so forth. Um, as you're probably aware, they were waiting for some utility lines to be relocated, which took a little longer than I think the county actually anticipated, but it is well underway. Uh, you're also aware that the project um, in the same vicinity as ours for Royal Farms and the Starbucks has proposed some intersection improvements there, and I've listed these. Um, they're going to have two left turn lanes coming out of Oaks Road as for the northbound movement on Route 5, and they're going to extend by 300 feet the southbound left turn lane for the eastbound movement onto Mount Wolf Road. Um, the three of these things will all work very well to improve traffic in the area. And Mr. Van Kirk, just so you can say you've seen it yourself, we've actually got signs up that say the road work has begun and it has in fact begun. And I do want to also point out that this is a county project, not a developer funded project. Although my company, we did contribute to this project in a couple of ways getting it to this point. We, did the, we paid for all of the original plans for the traffic circle. We obtained all the right of ways that they needed to allow this to be constructed at no cost to the county. Uh, but the balance of the project is a, a county funded CIP project. <coughs> Um, again, you've seen this. This is the double left turn coming out of Oaks Road from the Starbucks and the Royal Farms project. And then the next slide is, illustrates the 300-foot um, the extension to the southbound left turn lane on Route 5 as it heads into Mount Wolf Road. So all of these will have a, a significant impact in that immediate area and improving traffic flow and especially uh, vehicle safety. The intersection where the traffic circle is, is going has been a really big accident producer, and that should, um, should well go away. The next slide is an aerial view of the project, just to give you some sense of where things are located. Um, we're on the corner where the Wawa is located. Next to that is Cedar Point Federal Credit Union and Advance Auto fronting Route 5. Uh, fronting Mount Wolf Road is our tractor supply store. And this new self-storage annex is going behind Tractor Supply, Cedar Point, and Advance Auto, tucked back in the corner back here. We still have one lot left on Route 5, facing Route 5, next to the Advance Auto Parts Store that is presently undeveloped, and we don't have anybody we're talking to presently about this. We're currently proposing our self-storage project in two phases. 
Phase one being the 24,000 square foot building closest to tractor supply. Phase two, which would come later down the road, uh, is the 10,700 square foot building more behind the advance auto parts store. The site development work that we would propose to do now would um, include the parking associated with phase one, the driveway coming around behind tractor, adjacent to tractor supply. Um, it would probably put the pad site on grade for phase two, but it would not include the immediate parking lot in front of phase two, but the driveway to serve circulation through the entire property from Mount Wolf Road <coughs> alongside tractor supply over to what we're now calling North Triangle Drive would, uh, would be completed for that, that circulation. To give you an idea of what the, um, the neighborhood looks like, we've got uh, several pictures here of the undeveloped site on the top row uh, looking towards North Indian Creek subdivision. There is a tree line that separates our property from um, North Indian Creek Estates. Um, in the summertime, it's very lush. In the wintertime, it's clearly, you can see through some of those trees. But our plan that you'll see in a little bit, we are installing anything we need to do to get up to that 65-foot buffer yard with plantings to help keep the project screened from the North Indian Creek uh, subdivision side. There are really uh, two lots that are really impacted by this. So it's not the entire neighborhood. It's, it's two lots that back up to this area. Uh, the bottom row, you can see the backside of the existing Cedar Point Federal Credit Union and the Advance Auto, which is the view that we would have from, uh, from our place. In fact, uh, those pictures were taken standing in what would be where our driveway intersects with North Town, North Triangle Drive. Um, and I just took those pictures and kind of rotated around so you can see. Uh, and then looking up towards the Wawa. And then the last picture on the, in the bottom right is our driveway entrance off of Mount Wolf Road into the tractor supply parking lot. And that driveway already exists down past tractor supplies loading dock. And it actually extends beyond the tractor supply lot onto the lot for the, for the self storage facility. And we're gonna extend that driveway to make traffic flow for, for vehicles not having to maneuver internally. They can kind of go around the perimeter of the property if they, uh, if they so desire. Building plans um, and the renderings for the project. We, most of you know me from a lot of previous construction and development that I've done in the community all, at, all over Southern Maryland. We have always strived to, to build something that is attractive, something that is nice, something that's gonna continue to, to be like that. And we've tried to accomplish that same goal here by using masonry on all the exposed sides of the building and even wrapping around the corners in some cases to, to make sure this property is attractive. Um, you'll notice there's some what appear to be self-storage doors on the wall to your right. Those are strictly cosmetic. They're, that's why there's a grass yard in front of them. They're not there for, they don't, they don't function. They're just there so that people recognize this is a self-storage facility. Um, next slide, please, Brandy. Here you can see that entire building a little better. There are five entrances in phase one on the left side of the building as you're, as you're looking at it in this photograph. Those um, five doors go down five hallways straight through the building to a fire exit in the back closest to tractor supply. All of the storage units are accessed through one of those five doors. So if you're a tenant, they'll, you'll, open, you'll have a uh, code or a key card to get in the door, a fob to get in the door, because we can control who can and can't go in. There'll be a cart inside the door. You can take the cart out to your, where your car is parked, load whatever you're going to put in your storage unit, and take it in and obviously do the opposite when you want to remove something. Um, conditions, self-storage facilities rarely would have an outside entrance in the way of a garage door. Um, that's why you see a lot of the more modern self-storage facilities are multi-story with elevators inside and everybody's got to go in and up the elevator and so forth. In the TMX zone, we're limited to a 
total footprint of 25,000 square feet per self-storage building. We went to 24,000. If it weren't for that rule in the zoning ordinance, we may have gone multiple stories and had one building instead of a couple of buildings on the property ultimately. But our zoning ordinance does not allow for that in the TMX zone. If we were in the uh, development district, Lexington Park Development District, or the Leonardtown Development District, which most of which is controlled by the town of Leonardtown, but there are pieces that aren't, we could have had a multi-story facility, but not in the TMX. In fact, um, in the VMX, in the village centers, it's even a smaller footprint. I think it's 5,000 square feet is the maximum allowed. Um, this particular building will have 147 total storage units, varying sizes from five by fives to I think the biggest one is, most of them are 10 by 30. There might be a couple that are a little bit odd size that are slightly larger than that. Brandy? Uh, this is a view from the driveway coming back from the tractor supply driveway. Looking at this, the building would be on your left. And again, those five doors leading into the, um, to that. Brandy, if you could go back one slide, I apologize. Um, if you notice on this, there's a, a door on the corner of the building, the front corner closest to you. There is actually a small office there. It's not very large. We don't anticipate it being manned, other than maybe during initial lease up. We may have someone there on a regular basis. But once the facility is up and operating, we really don't anticipate utilizing that office for uh, any particular purpose. So it's, it's there in the event that we need it, but it's not intended to be, to be manned. Thank you, Brandy. Um, and that, in this case, that door's on the opposite end of the property, or opposite end of the building that you're seeing there on slide 11. And the next, plan, next slide is actually a floor plan of the building. You can see the various unit sizes, the unit mix that we have. And the unit mix is honestly determined based on our historical rentals, what's <coughs> in demand, what's not in demand. So you're not going to see very many really, really small units. You'll see a few up in the, uh, the second corridor from the top. But for the most part, they're 10 by 10s, 10 by 15s, 10 by 20s, and 10 by 30s, things of that nature. Again, just trying to meet the demand uh, of the market. Now we've got a view from what would be the Cedar Point driveway, the driveway between Cedar Point and Advance Auto looking back onto our project. And you can see phase one that we just discussed is on the right. Phase two is over on the, uh, the left-hand side. And again, that's a phase that we're not proposing to construct right now, but we're gonna get things pretty well in order to allow that construction. Um, looking now more specifically at that building, the, uh, again, masonry, the doors that you see along that left elevation are just, again, fake doors so that people will recognize this is a self-storage facility and not uh, be wondering what it is. This particular building is 10,700 square feet, uh, 87, 87 units, again, all with interior access. And the next plan, Brandy. You'll, um, in this particular case, if you look at the floor plan, you'll see a heavier exterior wall on the left end, which is kind of, if you're coming southbound on Route 5, you could look over and see that. It'll be all masonry, all masonry facing Route 5 and all masonry facing towards the uh, Phase 1. And you'll notice that the back of the building is jogged. And that jog is to keep us out of the 65-foot buffer that separates us from the adjoining property. I mean, obviously, it costs more money to build a building with corners like that. but that way we could build the maximum square footage without um, needing to get any relief on the 65 foot buffer that we're replacing between us and the uh, North Indian Creek. The, um, the next slide is just a aerial view of that parking lot area. You can see, and we're gonna talk about parking in a moment. You'll see there's a parking bay in front of each of the buildings where people can park their vehicles, bring the cart out, and there's also enough asphalt in front. There was a delivery truck, like a U-Haul um, uh, truck, or a moving van that needed. There's plenty of room there to accommodate 
that kind of vehicle to temporarily park in the driveway over adjacent to the building to unload furniture or whatever they're bringing in or out of the, out of the facilities. Okay, parking. Our existing ordinance um, has some issues as, as it relates to a lot of things, as I'm sure you've all figured out over the years, but in this particular instance, the use category number 66 was designed for a traditional self-storage facility where everybody drove their car right to the door where their unit is, raised the door, and they parked in the driveway in these internal of these self-storage facilities. So as such, the U66 parking allowances say you're allowed to have one parking space per employee. <coughs> well, if I said I was gonna have somebody there all the time, I could have one parking place for the entire 30 some thousand square feet of a facility. And clearly that doesn't work given the model that we're using where you have to park your car and take your stuff inside. So we need parking spaces. In fact, as an operator of an existing self-storage facility, um, we have more parking than that because we have other offices in our same building. I'm not sure how the existing ordinance would ever accommodate any self-storage facility when you're only allowed to have one, one parking space per employee. Self-storage facilities don't have more than one employee. It wouldn't. And so if Mr. Thompson was coming by to pay his bill, I guess you'd have to park on the street or something to come in to pay, to pay me if you wanted to come pay your bill because there wouldn't be any customer parking otherwise. So the ordinance has got some issues in that regard that I think um, upon reflection, staff probably agrees that there's something that needs to be done there. We were proposing a total of 14 spaces for the project, seven in front of each building with a crosswalk connecting the two in the event that somebody had to park in one side and get to the opposite side. That became a problem during the review of the project, given what I just discussed about you're allowed to have one space for employees, you know, for an employee. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have a, a really good meeting with staff and the acting account, uh, county attorney and talked about the fact that what, how, do we, how do we accomplish this? Um, it was determined after some investigation by staff and the <coughs> county attorney that perhaps from a parking perspective, given the circumstances, just from a parking perspective, we utilize use number 80, basically, which is warehouse parking, which is one space per 1,000 square feet plus one per employee. Well, at that point, I would have needed 36 parking spaces to satisfy that ordinance to the letter of the law. And I certainly don't need 36 parking spaces for a project like this because, again, we've got the personal firsthand experience with it. The ordinance does allow the planning director to allow you to reduce the total parking if you can justify it. So that's what we've proposed is from a parking perspective, we would look at this as use 80 and we provided a letter asking for it to be reduced down to 14 spaces. And that's where we find ourselves today. That's how we got here. It was a little bit of a convoluted path to get here, but we're here. And I believe staff obviously supports um, what we're proposing here. If there's any questions as we're going through, please don't hesitate to interrupt me. Um, next slide, Brandy. Just for, for your records, there's a copy of the memorandum from the county attorney's office to Lugham staff regarding the parking situation with um, an example of how it should be handled. And this is, this is how we, we accommodated that. And then site plan, which is what we're here to approve. Um, you may as well go to the, actually two pages away, Brandy, if we might, to the actual concept site plan. This is, obviously looks just like the aerial view that I showed you earlier from the renderings and the like. It shows where the existing driveway behind tractor supply ends. You can see where we're starting that and bring it around, bringing it around the building. It shows the proximity of the buildings to the various property lines. It illustrates our 65-foot buffer yard 
separating us from the, uh, the neighbors in North Indian Creek. Uh, we've illustrated the stormwater facility locations that have been reviewed by Department of Public Works and Transportation at a concept level and have received their, their approvals. We've provided um, landscaping as required by the ordinance uh, near the building entrances as well as in the parking areas and the appropriate number of, of, uh, of trees, shrubs, and so forth, not only on the site but in the, in the buffer yard as well. We, we do plan to utilize existing vegetation in the buffer yard to whatever extent is practical. There are some mature trees and so forth that already exist in that buffer yard, so we don't, we don't intend to go remove them and then plant something that's not mature. We're gonna utilize the mature trees wherever practical when it comes time for the actual installation of the landscaping. Um, again, I mentioned earlier, we're calling it North Triangle Way right now. <coughs> Presently, the street that starts at Mount Wolf Road on the north side of Triangle Drive is nameless. Um, it's just a, a street that comes in behind the Wawa, has a driveway that goes into the tractor supply. It has a couple of, two or three driveways that go into Wawa, a driveway that goes into Cedar Point, and one that goes into Advance Auto, and then it dead ends down where that future uh, lease parcel four exists over next to Advance Auto. So, Given the fact that it doesn't have a name, we've taken the liberty of naming it North Triangle Way as to differentiate that from Triangle Drive. So it, it now has a, uh, has a name. There's also a, a maintenance agreement that, it, that exists already um, to maintain that private road. It is not a county road, it is a private road. There's already a maintenance agreement in place to, uh, to care for that. And I, I believe that pretty well sums up my presentation as to what we're proposing. And uh, I'm happy to attempt to answer any questions that you might have. Mr. Fazekas. Mr. Parlett, um, thank you for your explanation on some of the problems with this project versus how our zoning and our uh, land use is situated. Um, it was uh, refreshing to hear that you would have built the two stories if, if allowed. Um, you know, there's only a finite amount of land in the county. Right. And when Charlotte Hall runs out of land, we're going to start going into the areas we're trying to preserve as rural. Um, and, um, you know, that's not upon you. This is, this is for us to go back and hopefully that next time we get the, the plan a little bit better. You know, it's a learning experience. There already are um, a number of two-story structures uh, new and old um, in the vicinity. Um, and since we don't have a sign or ordinance in the county, there are signs that are close to three stories, <laughs> you know, really at a scale for that. So I don't know, was it a scale issue that was the original reasoning for that type of uh, use there? Um, but hopefully that brings a, a problem to light that we can now hopefully address in the future so that, you know, future, if, if you decide to build some more <laughs> storage units in the county. <laughs> At my age, I don't anticipate that. Yeah. Uh, so, there will be someone behind me for certain. So, yes. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, the one question, well, one question I did have that you answered was about the, the faux and fake garage doors. Yes. Um, I've seen that in many other um, storage units, and I always wondered why they did it. Was it was it were they planning it and decided against it last minute? But as you said, it's more of a visual right. um, recognizing that, you know, th th these are garage size panels, and that's what a typical storage place looks like. So it's really an aesthetic, which is which is nice, because some, some of the buildings are not that aesthetically pleasing. Right. So It helps break up the monotony of... Of, of that wall. And that's also something you Change the to. colors in the masonry, as you might have seen yeah. in the, in the yeah. elevations, again, trying to make this more attractive. You know, as a, as a St. Mary's County developer, I live here, I work here, I care about what this community looks like, and the projects, as I said when I first started, we've always tried very hard to build really nice projects. You ride by any project that we, we own and the way it's maintained, the way the grass is maintained, the landscaping, and so forth. Um, again, I live here. I want this to be nice for our community because I'm part of that community and have been for almost 69 years. So, I do have two questions, though. So the first would be, um, 
the space um, where the driveway coming behind the tractor supply comes through. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's marked as a driveway. There, are there any plans on actually having like outdoor RV storage in that location, or is that purely going to be a no, we have, driveway? We have no plans for any outdoor storage at all. Okay. Because I've seen that in some places. And so it's, it's, first of all, it's not terribly profitable. Yeah. And second of all, it looks like heck all the time. So I just it's just not own, attractive. I still have my own storage unit. You put it in there, you forget about it for five or six years, and the bills just keep racking up. So I'm sure sometimes people's yeah, uh, we, RVs are the same way. We did <laughs> contemplate. In fact, one of our earlier plans um, had self-storage unit like this that was going to be two stories with, because you can build a two stories, which is still limited to 24,000 or 25,000 square feet with additional bays for RV and boat storage that would be enclosed, conditioned space. Mm. And we really, the, given the size of the site, we couldn't get enough of those spaces to get to the economies of scale where we could build it to make it cost effective to lease those facilities. They're really very much in demand. Um, I spoke to a, a company in um, Pennsylvania who had a really new facility, very nice, and I was trying to emulate that. And they said they have people driving 150 miles from there to get there to, to put there. Now, if somebody spends a quarter million dollars on an RV or a boat, sure. you don't want it sitting out in the north mm -hmm. east winters. Um, so it's it makes sense. I just did not have enough space here to do this to make it make sense. The reason we originally got our own um, a storage space was because we bought a small teardrop trailer and uh, we only had a one car garage. So we wanted to protect our investment. And uh, at the time, it seemed the right thing to do. Um, one last question, and that's about um, loading and unloading. So <clears throat> is there going to be a striped loading zone at the door? Okay. Yes, so across the entire front of, front of the building, okay. there'll be an area there labeled loading zone, the full width of the fronts of both buildings. So if someone needs to a larger vehicle, they can stop it there to um, offload. Like a mo Rarely do we get a moving van like a tractor trailer at our facility because it would be very difficult to weave it back into the facility. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll park out on Business Center Drive <clears throat> and fill the furniture in if they have to. In this particular case, there would be room to accommodate that type of activity um, in front of the building. It doesn't happen very often, but if someone's moving out of the area and they need a place, they've sold their house, but they're not ready to, they need a place to temporarily put stuff or somebody moving into the area and their house isn't finished, they need a place to store stuff. Uh -huh. So it does happen at some level. That's all I had, thank you. Are there any other questions? Yeah, uh, I have a question. Mr. Parlett, when I was looking at the color rendering of the current facility that you spoke of that's on Golden Beach Road, I see that it has fencing around it. Yes. And this one does not. Yes. What is, what is the difference? The easy difference. All of those doors giving access to all those units would be exposed to the general public wandering in and out if there wasn't a fence there. In this particular case, there's only five access doors, which all have cameras over them, and they all have fobs. You need a fob to get into the door. And the self-storage industry, and this is nothing new, we've, we've done this for years, and it's been done in the industry for many, many years, if you're a little late on your paying your rent, we can deny you access for your, in our case, a code at our current place, or we could deny your FOB access. We don't have to even do it. The computer does it automatically. If you're five days late and it's, it sends you an email reminder, and oh, by the way, you can come put your code in or wave your FOB and it won't let you in. If you're 15 days late, we actually will go to your unit and overlock it. All of the self-storage units have a place for two locks. We use cylinder locks like you might see on a, a vending machine, the little round ones that, that you can't duplicate them. And <clears throat> we don't have a key to those locks. When somebody rents a storage unit, it lock comes with three keys. You as a tenant get all three keys. We cannot access your unit unless we drill that lock out. That's the only way we can get in. There is no master override key. Um, but there's a second slot in each one of these locks. So if you somehow got into the 
through the gate, you followed somebody else in as an example. We can overlock you with another lock and you can't open that one either. So we can keep you out of your unit. It makes getting the bills paid a little easier. Um, so luckily, we don't have many auctions for delinquent payers like you see on Storage Wars on TV. If, if, we, if we auction off one unit a year, it's a lot. We do a really good job of working with people, collecting them, <coughs> doing. But this type of facility does not need any kind of access control. That, that fence that we have at our current facility and that gate is strictly there to keep people from wandering around and hiding back in behind the buildings or breaking into a building. Here, there's only five ways in. They're all in the front. And they all have cameras looking at each one. The doors on the back of the building are fire exits. There's not even hardware on the outside. So there's nothing out there to, there's no lock to Jimmy or anything because it's got a panic bar on the inside. You can't, uh, you can't get in that way. So that's why there's Thank you. no fence. And one more question about lighting. Is there going to be lighting? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the, the facility is open from 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> that's when the locks will actually function. At our, at our current facility, that's when the gates will function until 10 or 10.30 at night. 16 hours a day, I think, is what we're open. Because uh, we don't want people coming and going at odd hours. You know, you're, you're not allowed to live in this place. We, don't, we, we certainly don't want to set that up. So within each of these corridors, there are cameras that are motion activated. Anytime somebody comes in, the recording will pick them up. Uh, at the front doors, it's continuously recording so we can see anybody approaching or driving by or whatever. We don't have to wait for the motion on the, uh, on the front ones. So that's how we provide security to that. I have a couple questions for you, Mr. Parlett. Um, you answered the access. Um, doesn't the ordinance require a fence or a berm? Along, I mean, it says it in there as one of your standards. It says a fence or a berm. We actually have a, what I'll call a berm because of the, of the elevation difference between us and uh, North Indian Creek. Plus, we're landscaping that 65-foot path. So I think it says a, a fence or a berm from dissimilar uses. The other uses in the area are commercial uses. It's, they're not residential. Right. It says a fence or berm and... <coughs> The buffer. landscape fence berm or what? It says a fence or berm and the buffer. Yeah, and we're we're there's an existing natural berm that's created there given the elevation along that property line. In the back. In the back. Not on the other sides. The other sides part of it's facing um well the rest of it's all facing existing commercial activities. Right, I, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen, I used to buy storage lockers after I retired from the government. I went around and bought them for a while until I realized it was too much work, hauling stuff to the dump. But um, I don't think I've ever been to one that didn't have some sort of fence, even to get back to the buildings. Well, I'll just look at the one on Route 5 here in Waldorf, if you want. I mean, in, in Leonardtown, where there's two new ones on Billingsley Road. If then, they, if they have outside access, generally there's a fence. If it's all internal access, uh, because they don't have it, the ones you're talking about? Right. Even to get back to the facilities? Because there's no outside doors other than. I understand the, yeah. what you're saying. Okay. No fences. Um, now, the one in Leonardtown does have a fence around the part that is outside access, but the main storage building, the multi story building, there's no fence around that to preclude you from coming up to, to gain access to that. Is that the same access you're proposing, the fobs to get yes, into the yes, absolutely. hallways? Yep, absolutely. Now, if a person rents one of those in there, do they only get access to their hallway? Or their can hallway. Or go in any of the five? Each, each of the five doors has a different keying system. Oh, that's good. And you can go try any one you want. It's only going to open the one that's for yours. Okay. Um, and then you would have the keyed lock at your actual unit. Right, to get into the unit. Um, you mentioned that the second building or mostly would be closer to only two lots um, back actually, in the... 
all of the project is only close to two lots. Two lots. For all the project. How, how close is it to the actual houses? Did anybody ever One of them that? is about 150 feet and from my building to their building, and one of them is about 200 feet. That's in round numbers, but we did measure that just last, just now, last week. with your buffer, do they already have some buffer on the properties? They really don't have much don't of have a buffer. Much. They've, um, in one case, they've, they've actually built pretty closer to the property line than you would typically have expected, but it is what it is. Yeah. Um, Ms. Summers mentioned lighting. Where is your lighting at? Is it just on the buildings? No, no, there'll be parking lot lights out in the, in those islands in front, so that parking lot area is well lit. You have to remember, people are gonna be at dark, you know, in the wintertime, especially at 4.30, it's dark. Right. So we've gotta have the, the property well lit right. so they can feel safe and secure. Yeah, I just didn't see them on here. You don't see any light poles or anything on there. I'm not sure that they're shown on this plan yet, but they are absolutely in my budget. Okay. There, there may actually, I need these glasses. I think that there is. I didn't see them in the renderings. They may be in the plan. Like they're not, they're not in the rendering, but they're Okay, all, they're I didn't see them in the actual drawings. They're on the site plan. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to assume like lights on the building, lights out there also. Absolutely. Okay. And we'll probably have some up lights along that, that front wall, just again, for aesthetics of the building itself at night, just to make it more attractive. Yeah. And, um, when I first seen this project, like a week and a half ago, or I've seen it longer on the site, I was thinking, you know, I got to check into that traffic circle. And then I happened to look on the county site last week or the other day, and it said it was started. So that was one of my questions for Mr. Gotch too, real quick. Um, I know it says what a 60 day, is that what it said on there? 60 day roughly I can't exactly remember what the county had a little um, blurb about that. We're starting round about now, and what's the time frame of that? Uh, 60 days would be really quick. I don't know what the- Or maybe it says six months, I can't remember. I don't know exactly, but I think 60 days would be very quick. But um, there's no other holdups on that. Everything is engineered, surveyed, approved, bought, Correct. acquired. Correct, we were just waiting for Verizon to take their line off the pole. And uh, once the line came down, uh, we issued the contract the next day. Okay. And uh, it took them a couple weeks to go from the notice to proceed to get out there and start working. Okay. So they were removing curb today. Okay. Um, one more follow-up question with Mr. Parlett. What's your time frame on this building? I would tell you right now, I don't have a specific time frame. Um, as, as we all are aware, there's been supply chain issues that have pushed prices up. Steel, because this is a steel frame building, was no exception to that. I watched the budget go from here to here. Um, and the, uh, the county commissioner's infinite, infinite wisdom, they've imposed an excise tax now on all commercial <laughs> projects. So now I have another $20,000 excise tax to pay just to get a permit that originally was not in my budget. So we're gonna obviously watch the market, see what the market's doing. Are we really headed to a recession? Are we not headed to a recession? Um, honestly, if, if we are, prices may come back down, so it may make it more viable to build this project. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. But it's a project that there's absolutely demand for. Again, we stay 100% leased. I mean, it's. It's very rare that I have anything to lease, and we never have it for more than two days. And there's always a waiting list. Yeah. Uh, and we never know when someone, in, a, in the self-storage business, we never know when someone's going to leave. All the tenancies are month to month, and as long as you keep paying, you stay. You may come in tomorrow and say, hey, here, here are my keys, and we'll give you your key deposit back, and you give us the lock, clean it out, and then we'll have a unit for lease. Um, and I think everyone in the north end of the county, there are uh, one, two, three, at least three other facilities in the north end of the county. I don't think are nearly at our caliber that we have at our existing place, not remotely like we're proposing here. And they stay full as well. Because when people come to see us, 
we refer them or try there, try there. We've already done it. They're full too. You know, the only reason I really asked that question was because, you know, that, as you know, that circle has been a pet peeve of mine ever since tractor supply was yes. built. Um, That's why I took those pictures. And I appreciate that too. Um, so I was just, even though there's not much traffic with this project, I would not be in any traffic person or an engineer think that that traffic circle could be done long before you would have a yes to answer your question in that in that context this project hopefully will be permitted sometime this calendar year we're not going to go start it in the winter so the earliest that we would expect to start would be next spring now unfortunately i've just told my traffic my consultant to my right that he doesn't have to rush so much. And I probably should not have said that out loud because you know, we keep a fire built under them trying to get things permitted. Um, but reality is next spring would be the earliest and I am confident Mr. Gotch will have that traffic circle done well in advance of that. Do you it really think he can beat the Leonardtown Road? Uh, you know, they're supposedly working at night. I avoid that road, but... <laughs> But no, it'll be done short. It'll be done quick. It's uh, we're doing the traffic circles on uh, MacArthur Boulevard and Buck Hewitt right now. So, you know, between the two of them, they've been going about two months. So you build the bypass first, so that you can build the circle in the middle. Okay. And it it just it takes a couple months. Sure. So sixty days. I'm, if everything goes perfect, sure. But okay. that I mean that's a short timeline for. Okay. I would also just kind of interject there that this is a really heavy traffic area and that will also slow down the construction because of the traffic that you have to contend with. Yeah, I know it's just been a sl one of them one of them slow I don't I'm, know. I don't know who they got to move them utilities, but you're not going to get an argument from me. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, thank you all very much. No, this is uh this is our contract that we bid out every year so they'll go fast okay thank you very much mr Call hunt on. i'm getting ready to hit you with a question so can you give us your name and uh, business address please for the record sure thing wayne hunt i'm a professional land surveyor with little silences rest located here in leonardtown 41650 courthouse drive thank you sir i do notice on your site plan that you have um, the light poles and such which i'm sure are going to be down down uh, or all lighting is going to be within the uh, development itself, not not stray over the borders, especially toward the houses and things like that. Um, correct. There are ordinances which will prevent us from taking light off site. It's supposed to be 0.1 candle power at the property line. We're going to be well below that. Okay. Also, I see on here, like uh, right at the entrance, you have three it says property stop bars. I take it that's some type of a gating system that no, comes no. in. The striping on the asphalt. Just striping on the asphalt. Called a stop bar. Okay. Okay. That's all. I just wanted to make sure that the, the lighting part of it was on the record. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, thank you. It's good to see you, Mr. Hunt. I haven't seen you. Well, I hadn't. It's good okay. to be here. We will, um, applicants done. Yes. Everything. I'll go ahead and open it to public testimony at this time. Uh, on our sign-in sheets, I had one person that wanted to speak this evening, Mr. Carl Ward. Did you want to speak, sir? Yes. Would you come up to the microphone and give us your name and address, please? You don't have to give us your house address. Uh, my so name's Carl Ward. I live in Indian Creek, uh, 37790. And um, I think what I want, first off, I, I talked to Mr. Parlett prior to the meeting, and I find that his proposal and everything is wonderful. He did a great job on it. The only concerns I have being in Indian Creek is the buffering and the lighting. If the lighting's fixed so that we're not sitting at the end of a runway at night with it all lit up and everything. And also we have a lot of transit people around the Charlotte Hall area, homeless and stuff like that. Without a fence through there, that becomes a shortcut into our neighborhood and over to Potomac Way where McKay's and all was that. And uh, I think that there is a need for a tall fence and sufficient buffering so that we're not getting the light and stuff like that. One thing I was gonna address, Mr. Parlett's already stated it, 
that they do have the water runoff and everything taken care of. I was concerned about that. But um, I think my main concern is maintaining as much privacy, the residential from the commercial, with a buffer, with the fencing, and with, with uh, trees and all the natural elements there. But you know, if that could be addressed a little more in detail, I'd really appreciate it. And like I said, with the transit, we have a lot of, there's a lot of homeless people starting to congregate in the Charlotte Hall area. They're out there every day, they're in, with carts and all. And once you clear that off and make it easy access for them, they're going through the woods and into our neighborhood and crossing over into Potomac Way. And the only thing that's kept them out of there so far is it's just grown up. They, if you go up to um, Food Line, there's paths through there where the employees, but not only them, you see all sorts of people wandering around there, you know. And uh, I think for the security of our neighborhood, that a fence and as much buffering and trees that we can have put there, and of course the lighting facing in so that we're not getting flooded with it. I live down in the Indian Creek, and I can still see the lights from Food Lion there. So, you know, we're, we're going along with it. I think Mr. Parlett's concept for the self-storage is great. It's helping us, it's not hurting our water table, it's not hurting our traffic, it's still giving the opportunity to grow, but those are my concerns. You know, will there, uh, eventually in this, in this self-storage, will there be res any kind of a retail in there? Will it all be self-storage, like personal self-storage? You know, if we're, we're kind of concerned that maybe something retail would come out of that, like selling uh, tractor or trailer parts or things like that. You know, different things that a retail could develop within there. I'm not sure, going from 66 to 80, I'm not, I really don't understand it. I think that's the main thing that I'm not, you know, comfortable with because I don't know that, what that rezoning really entails. But like I said, once again, I'll thank you for your opportunity, for my opportunity to speak. And like I said, Mr. Parlett, it's a beautiful setup and I commend you on that. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions Mr. Ward, for Mr. Ward? I have a quick question for you. Yes. You spoke here at other meetings about noise and fumes. I remember, I remember all yes. that. Have you been affected by any amounts of noise from tractor supply or anything else that you could uh, speak of or has been better than you expected? Basically, the biggest problem we have with noise is the accidents we're having there at Triangle and Mount Wolf and right in that area. I had to drive around one where someone turning into Wawa got nailed on Mount Wolf. I'm really concerned that later on they're, they're talking about building homes down there. Mount Wolf, that road's becoming obsolete right now. But I mean business noise. from Business the noise, we hear a lot from Mawawa. We hear a lot. You hear the trash cans all morning, anytime from three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. There's dumpsters being banged around and all. You can't sleep in the summer with your windows open because of it. And I'm down in the development six, eight houses. And the way uh, Indian Creek Drive is, it runs straight down and it's like a funnel. It catches all the noise that comes over that berm <coughs> and it just, it funnels into the neighborhood. Right. And uh, hopefully, that, hopefully the residents are happy with a self storage. Yeah, I, if, I think, if approved because I think it's a low intensity. It's a good thing. I, I'm not, I'm not criticizing. Well, sure. I understand. Just concerned about the security and maintaining the privacy of our subdivision. You know, it's, yeah. I realize growth requires some give. I, I, I mean, not being a security expert, I don't know if a fence on one piece of property, does tractor supply have a fence behind it? I mean, it's, it's right next to this. But if, right now, the woods are so thick in there, right in that, that area, but as you go down, Mr. Parlett pointed out there's a couple of homes, but what it will do when he clears that out, it gives them big access to the edge of his property, and then they just go between the trees and right on to our neighbor's property. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm not really sure we can address 
you know, and it's uh, one of those issues, situations. But. And we see more and more homeless. They had a little homeless village, uh, cardboard boxes and everything they were living in over by the parking rod right there on Golden Beach Rod. There must have been, uh, Golden Beach Road, there must have been 12, 14 of them living in there right. in cardboard boxes. And uh, these people, they can't help it. But if you have children out or something like that and all, you don't want them wandering through your neighborhood. Right. To be quite honest, I don't think anyone here would. And we're concerned about things like that, security as well as, you know, not just co creature comfort, but security. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very thank much, you. sir. Mr. Evans. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Ward, Ward. Don't, run, don't, don't run away. <laughs> I got to so, so you finally want me. Well, no, 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 no. You're not going to get away easy. <laughs> So again, thanks, thanks for coming back. I know you've testified before, and, and I certainly appreciate that. And with regard to the lighting, the lighting, Mr. Hartlett's required to keep the lighting on the premise, on the lot. Oh yeah, well, I mean, um, that's fine. I just wanted to address it, not to... Right, and so I'm gonna try to go through and address some of the things you talked about. Okay, with because... regard With regard to, to homeless and, and the rest of that, I'd like to think that that was not a national problem and certainly not a problem everywhere in the county. Okay. I don't have an answer for you with regard to that, other than the fact that, you know, we have some endeavors, soup kitchens just opened up down where we are, that's gonna be a help. And so, to the degree that we can, we'll try to help folks that are homeless, that are, that are in, in need. That doesn't address your, your issue specifically, but globally, it's a problem, it's a community problem well, that we're I all trying to work that. at. You know, I, I'm just concerned about, if you have, for example, uh, if you go behind Food Line, there's trails all different through there where yep. they all cut through there and everything. And I don't want our neighborhood to become a shortcut. And somebody goes by, hey, your garage is open. I can sell this and get something. And I don't if disagree. If you have to go around it, they'll circumvent our neighborhood for right. the most part. And so I don't disagree with you at all. But with regard to buffers, um, years ago I used an analogy. A lady came in and was very upset with regard to buffers. Um, property owners on both sides of a line have a certain responsibility to create some buffering. Mr. Parlett will do whatever he can, and I'm hopeful that the, the community, your community, will do to the degree that they can, they will help with some buffering. Because in those days, what happened would be, I would ask the question, when, when, you, when you built your home, how far to the lot did you clear? It's my lot, I cleared all the way to the lot line. Well, that's perfectly fine. But the fact of the matter is, if you want a buffer, you can participate in that buffering. Um, and whether that is buffering with trees, shrubs, a fence, um, but quite frankly, building a fence isn't going to stop homeless people from climbing over the fence. It just isn't gonna do it. I mean, you can put barbed wire, razor wire, whatever, but, that's, but, but aesthetically, you don't want that in your community. And to be honest with you, this building that, that he proposes is something that this planning commission talks about a lot, about trying to bake, break up planes along buildings so they don't, they're not so linear, so they're, they're more aesthetically pleasing, you know, that sort of thing. So I don't have, I don't have an answer for the, the, the things that you're, you're talking about, only to say that, that they are, they, they are they're, those problems are everywhere. Right, I understand that. And so to the degree that you folks can be a good neighbor with Mr. Parlett, uh, will certainly be helpful. Yeah, I well, mean, you know, I, like I say, I, I want to be a good neighbor with him. I, uh, I've looked at his uh, proposal and everything. I think it's a beautiful one. He has landscaping and everything. It, it looks lovely. I'm just, the only thing I'm concerned about is the security of the neighborhood and the lighting type situation sure. where we're not, like I said, lit up like a runway. And I'm hopeful that moving forward that we can address some of the things, these anomalies um, in the comprehensive plan and zoning actually with regard to what we can and can't do in, in town centers. Um, I think it'll be helpful, you know, moving forward. Right. Uh, and so hopefully uh, we'll be able to do a better job. Well, I know Mr. Parlett, he's, he's a very well-known and well-respected gentleman in the neighborhood. And I'm not looking to agitate him or aggravate him. I'm just oh, worried no, no, about no, my no, neighbor. Oh, no, 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 And I don't think he takes it that way either. You're good. <laughs> yeah. No. You no. know, I, I have a great deal of respect for the gentleman. We don't know each before. other personally. This but is I'm not sure. agitation. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
like I say, I, I've been here. Mr. Parlett's been in St. Mary's County a lot longer than I have. Yeah, I me too. I came here in 79. And, uh, you know, he, he'd probably been here 30 years before that. or He was born here, I'm certain. He was. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you win. <laughs> but, uh, but, but I appreciate you coming back. I mean, and, and, and I, wish, I wish we had other folks that would come back and just and, and share their, their insights. It's helpful for the Planning Commission. Well, you can't complain if you don't complain. Could you write that down and send it out? Maybe that would help. No, that's just how I feel. <laughs> you know, I can't go back and tell everybody else I can't stand it and not come down here and tell you. You're doing your best. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Parlett, did you want to address anything? Yeah, I just want to address a couple of comments. We did not change use categories from 66 to 80. We're still being defined as a self-storage uh -oh. facility. Only for the purpose of parking did we jump to a different category because the parking just would not work in our circumstance. So we're still meeting all the requirements of a self-storage facility, use 66. In regards to retail sales, retail sales are allowed in the TMX zone, but they're not permitted in a self-storage facility. Exactly. Right. So the only retail sales that could potentially be done at the property would be within the confines of our office where we sell boxes <coughs> because somebody's going to move and they, they want boxes. We oftentimes will sell someone boxes. That's really the extent of, of retail sales there. And that would also, it works to our advantage because we don't want people who are renting a storage unit to take over the parking lot with a yard sale. You know, we can tell them ordinance doesn't allow this. You can't do this. So we don't have to be the bad guy. We can blame the ordinance because we don't want that going on on our properties anyway. And there would be the occasional auction if someone doesn't pay their bill. That I'm not sure you could call that a retail sale, but it would be a sales activity, I guess, in that circumstance. But again, the way we, co way we collect the money and treat our customers, that does not happen very often. Good evening, Mr. Hauser. I came up just... Um only to be beaten to the punchline by Mr. Parlett. Those are the two points I was going to speak to just to clear up Mr. Ward's confusion there over when we talk about use type 80. Just to explain the parking, um, what that all was about in slightly different terms. We had an ordinance that defined personal storage a certain way that did not contemplate at the time it was written the business model that Mr. Parlett's moving forward today, where rather than have kind of like the storage unit I used when I came back from school. You'd roll up the car right out front of the door. It was right there. Open it up, pop the trunk, load it in, load it out. You didn't need parking because you parked right there in front of the door, similar to what the pictures show your existing facility is like. That's not the business model here. They do not have direct access. So we've got a situation where we have a use type that's just ever so slightly dissimilar, but in a meaningful way from the existing use type. What the CZO says that when we have those undefined or indeterminate or not quite defined or spelled out use times is that the planning director has the discretion to go in and look at the existing standards and say which are the ones most substantially similar. When you go through the main use table in chapter 50, personal storage, obviously. That's why when we talk about these standards that talk about no lighting shining directly onto any adjacent property, when we talk about there are no retail sales, those will apply with equal force to this storage unit as it would any other. Or it also comes those, do we, we do that same look for similar use types parking standards as well, which are in chapter 64 of the CZO. And it's a similar thing there where we look and see what's similar. And there, personal storage, because it was written for a day and an age where those were the types of storage units we saw almost exclusively, it just didn't quite fit. So I, the only thing I would quibble with is to say we're not truly saying this is use type 80 for the parking, what the planning director does in a case like that is the directive is to equate the probable number of required parking spots based on existing uses in that table. So it's not quite just look at use type 80 and say it because we like what it has to say. It says take the survey of all the other use types that are out there that depend on very, very, very infrequent retail, retail traffic, but there's obviously still some need for retail parking. And figure out what works. And there's some other suggested use types that are in the memo that we will, after the fact, make sure is uploaded for any members of the public. Um, that's all I was going to say just to try and explain that. There is no 
it is not a personal it is a personal storage unit it's being treated as a personal storage unit we just had to take into account that there is a meaningful difference between this particular proposed use and the parking standards we had on the books to address prior personal storage units any questions based on that i just think i think this is sort of um, an opportunity to recognize the fact that the ability of, of the county land and growth management and the developer Finding an answer to a to what really is a is, is a common sense thing, uh, as opposed to uh, being hard and fast to that use and 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 denying what they want to do when the common sense dictates that the director has some some um, um, some ability to make to make some changes. Sometimes, so, and then sometimes I come up here and tell you them's the breaks, well, Merle. Well, I under, well, That's listen, what the code says. I understand that. So I am confident, I'm confident that tonight, recognizing that you've seen this anomaly and moving forward with the new, the new format that they have in moving in storage facilities, that when the comprehensive plan comes forward, we will address some of these little anomalies. You guys keeping a list of all these little things? We've got a CZO update coming up, yeah, and that's that, all I'm going to say. Know, and I know that. <laughs> and so I'm just saying, did you, well, you just years. write in a little list someplace and so we can address all these things? It's but thanks. Up. Listen, I'm, I'm kidding with you, but I, I appreciate the fact that you guys can work through an issue like that and, and, and come to a remedy that certainly makes sense. <laughs> so, or he could have made the entire lot a loading and unloading zone because if you're there, you're loading or unloading. Yeah. I mean, you're parking technically, but you're not there for anything else except loading or unloading. It's. I like the orderliness of having. I some know lines. you do. Yeah, you I know you do. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hauser. Thanks, John. Uh, was there anybody else from uh, for public testimony at this time? Okay. Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close public testimony, and open it back up to the board for deliberations. Um. Job well explained, Mr. Hunt, Mr. Parlett. Appreciate that. Thank you for county staff and all for working out the uh, parking. I won't say problem, but just the things that need to be straightened out. Uh, is there any anybody else have anything to discuss? Nope. There is no other. Uh, I'll accept a motion if we feel that we can move forward with this. I'll do it. Okay. In the matter of concept site plan number CSP21-0201, Charlotte Hall Self Storage Mount Wolf Annex, having accepted the staff report and having made a finding that the objectives of section 60, excuse me, 60.6 .6 of the comprehensive zoning ordinance have been met, and noting that the reference project has met all requirements for concept approval. I move that the concept site plan be approved with the following conditions. Any road improvements required by the state and county must be concurrent with the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Parlett. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay, is there any other business this evening? Hearing none, motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. We have a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. 15 minutes late.